let's stay with uh, the Prime Minister and the relationship that he has with both you and with your province, because there are times when you've surprised people, not necessarily me, but you've surprised people by working closely with them, um, including on the health accord. You obviously you know, needed to sign a, a health deal and you came to an agreement that both sides could work with. Maybe not everyone's not happy about all points, but you found agreement. And, and you've done that several times, but still, Alberta seems to be a, a, a prime target for this prime minister and this government. Do you feel that Alberta is under attack from Ottawa far too often by Justin Trudeau and his administration? Well, you know, I wanted to give the prime minister the benefit of the doubt that uh, he had just made a decision to put Stephen Guibo in the environment ministry and that he wanted to give him the latitude to bring policy forward. But, I, but a leader also has to know that when their minister is um, going off in a direction that is harmful to the country, harmful to national unity, when they're proposing policies that are unachievable and impractical, when they're creating that kind of division, it's the job of a leader to step in whoa, and say, whoa, hold on a minute, there, there might be something that I need to do some course correction on here. So I've been giving the prime minister the benefit of the doubt that he understands that a net zero power grid in Alberta is not achievable, that he understands that a, a 20, 30 emissions target that's too aggressive is actually a production cap, that he has no business uh, doing, um, uh, trying to put forward a, a policy to have zero emissions vehicles sold 100% by 2035. Um, that uh, when, his, when his minister said that we're not building roads anymore after everybody's <laughs> going through the effort of trying to invest in zero emissions vehicles, like at what point does the prime minister step in and say that his minister uh, of environment has gone completely off the rails. And so that's what I've been encouraging to, him to do, to have come to the table, to work collaboratively with those of us who want to find a solution. I, I've put forward an emissions reduction and energy development plan that would get us to carbon neutrality by 2050. That's our target. That's the target of our major trading um, partners. That's the target we should be working forward together. But we keep having an environment minister that is just pulling things out of thin air that uh, can't be implemented. And, and I think and he has not, to be accountable for that. He's not just a minister who um, is picking fights with Alberta. It's every province. I mean, the, on Bill C-69, it was every single province joined in the, the, the court challenge to Bill C-69 because this is a minister that definitely goes too far on, on C-69, on other issues. Um, he, he seems to be picking fights at a time when the prime minister doesn't need more headaches. I mean, look at the polling numbers. He, he needs friends. He needs wins. And you don't get that by fighting with everyone. No, you don't. And, and look, that's where we're heading, where we're heading to an election and he's using Alberta as a punching bag to try to win votes in eastern Canada. It's a same old story. It happens over and over again. Then let's just do it. Let's just have an election so that this can be resolved one way or another. And if uh, he loses the election, then we move into, into a different path. Then if, and if we win, then perhaps we'll have a, a more mature professional relationship again. But, but fighting this, this kind of campaign battle, when we're trying to, to get things done and try to, uh, trying to, to behave in a collaborative and cooperative way, it's not helpful. It was uh, the last election, um, and that was prior to you taking office, but in the last election, he campaigned in uh, BC's lower mainland and in the suburbs of Toronto against Alberta. He, he went to those places and warned suburban mothers worried about the health of their children. It, look at what's happening in Alberta, the, a COVID spike. Well, if you vote for the Conservatives, the federal Conservatives, your children are at risk. Uh, that is unhelpful to national unity. It, it is, and it, it's, un, it's unacceptable. I mean, the, the court has come down every time they lose, saying they, they have an anticipation, an expectation of cooperative federalism. That means that the federal government cannot just announce unilateral policy in our areas of jurisdiction, and yet they do it time and time and time again. The court calls them out, and then it's like they slough it off, they act like the court didn't render a decision. And so this is not the way a constructive confederation works. I get that we have different political views and we've got different ideas about how we want to to reach our targets. But I, I can tell you, when I get to the table with the first ministers, we come from all different perspectives too. Uh, NDP, liberal, conservative, and yet we've managed to find areas of common ground. That's how you're supposed to deal in an environment of cooperative federalism. And I'm, I'm just not seeing that the, the federal government is coming to the table in good faith that way.